What's up pretty gang, it's your favorite nail tech peaches back with another video and today we're going to be focused on doing a fill on acrylic toes. You guys have seen me do acrylic toes many times before my channel, start to finish, you know, focusing on the big toe, focusing on the little toe, but I don't think that I have specifically done a video on what it's like to do fills on toes. I really wanted you guys to see my retention especially because this is a she was a first time client with the toes but now she's actually back for her first fill okay so we're gonna get into all that but first i really want to make sure we have our subscriber for today which is ariel carter you guys already know click that subscribe click that notification bell turn it on because if you don't know when i'm uploading right the only thing that would let you know is the notification bell and the notifications all right all right so first things first i am taking a picture of the retention if you've been on my instagram page you guys already know nails by pretty face all right go ahead and follow me you know i record and document everything um so at first i think i was gonna put two months old until i realized this set is not exactly two months old um so i just put five weeks because honestly i remember she came in the beginning of august it's end of september so i was like mm, i don't know the exact time frame so that's just what we're gonna go with all right so normally right with acrylic toes we would take a cuticle pusher and push your cuticles i'll be honest with you guys i don't always do that for every single um, client because some people just don't have an excess in skin especially on the toenails and so it's gonna be pointless for me to do that so if i can kind of tell like they don't have stubborn skin that's grown on their um their nail plate which is called a cuticle okay i'll just go ahead and prep as normal so as you can see she did come back with all 10 toes but because i did a pedicure first okay because she did book for a basic acrylic pedicure which means ac acrylic toes with the pedicure people always ask me what order do you go ahead and do the pedicure in no matter what you will always do the pedicure first because the pedicure is the cleansing and maintenance of the actual feet and yes, the toenails, you know, the cuticles cleaning under the toenails. So it doesn't matter that acrylic toes are there or not. Like, you know, they're still toenails. So you wouldn't do anything different, if that makes sense. Also, if I were to do the acrylic toes first, like all the, um, the stuff that I'm doing to the cuticles and stuff, I wouldn't be able to necessarily do that um, during the pedicure. So it's kind of like they're missing out a part of that feeling of the pedicure okay i also always wait to the end to do the massage because i do not want any oils or lotions to interfere on the natural nail plate um in any sort of way because you guys know oils and butters and lotions those can cause lifting and i don't want any type of lifting even though you will be like prepping the cuticle i mean the cuticle you'll be prepping the natural nail like this i just still don't want no interference so just a quick bit of information on letting you guys know how we got to this point so you can see this one is lifted right which happens okay she's had these for quite some time she went to florida um for a while and so i'm just checking to see and honestly it just popped right off and it went back to her like shortest length so these are her all her natural toenails grown out i did not do any specific extending of her length because um she was a first time client getting acrylic toes and typically i will stick to what's closest to their natural toenail length okay since they have never had acrylic toes before all right so when that nail popped off it may look significantly shorter but it's okay because the whole extension is the length of her real toenail okay okay i'm sorry i'm gonna be taking breaks to drink some water my sinuses is just i slept with the window open now i'm all like mucusy so you know gotta keep my hot water on zek so excuse any little you know breaks and whatnot so as i said we are prepping just as normal you're gonna want to really make sure that there is no excess in um the cuticles which is like once again the skin that grows on that nail plate and we just want to make sure that we um go ahead and prep pretty well and then I just go ahead and for the most part wipe as much dust as I can get off or whatever because I mean it's not gonna really I don't want to say it's not gonna make a difference in the end you definitely don't want hella dust particles on there because when you put your acrylic down I mean it's gonna be bumpy underneath and it may interfere with your longevity okay so as you can see on this toe nail on this toe nail on this foot this is pretty much the only nail that popped off or had any problems so I'm just gonna go in with some sort of white, uh, milky white. I'm pretty sure this is the Young Nails one. You guys, I have lost so many jars and so many jars got glued shut that, uh, look, if I have extra jars, that's just what I'm using right now. So 
This is not polish, okay? This is Young Nails. That's typically what I use for um, Milky White on toes. So because this is a fill, right? If any toenails are chipped or missing, I will typically go ahead and do those first. Now in my chair, my rule is if you are missing more than four toenails, you need to book a brand new set. And I don't mean like you need to come with no toenails on. No, you can still get that feel, but you just need to book it as a brand new set because it's going to take way more time to rebuild most of the toes. You know what I'm saying? Like if most of them are gone, that's pretty much a new set. Okay. So I go in and start with the one that's missing because I'm going to need it to dry completely before I can even file. Now, I'm not going to be making this one as long as the others because we're getting ready to reset her back to her... Um, you know original length for the most part so I don't need to worry about making it so long because I'm getting ready to shorten the other ones anyways now this toenail will still be a little bit shorter than the others but that's okay because I mean they're gonna grow out and look the toenail came off so at some point you're gonna I don't wanna say you're gonna get what you're gonna get but they just may not be exactly the same because now this toenail is so short I'm not gonna be um, lengthening it as much as the other ones just due to uh, you know support reasons it's not enough toenail to be supporting a really long extension okay so after I go ahead and get this one together I'm gonna start at the big toe just like normal and go down all the rest of the toenails okay now when I do fills typically um, I you know you won't use a lot of product and I'll show you guys how that's gonna go and so you know normally when I do acrylic toes I'll go ahead and put acrylic on all five on this foot and then by the time I get to the big toe it's dry enough for me to file so I do the big toe and then you know the second toe go back and forth down the line and do that in this video I'm actually just gonna lay the acrylic on all ten toenails and then file just because it's a more seamless for this video so there's not so much back and forth you know so as you guys can see the amount of product I put is very little okay acrylic toes really don't need too much support we're not here building an apex we just are filling in what has grown out because this is once again this is a backfill okay we're just doing what needs to be done for the look now if you have other parts of the toenail that have become thinned out or unbalanced over time go ahead and fix those areas because the thing about it is sometimes over time it's kind of weird but like the color of the acrylic may dole out or certain areas may look a little um thinner as far as like Okay, how do I explain this? I don't. I really don't know how to explain how to explain this. But sometimes the color just don't look the same, and so sometimes you're realizing like, oh wow, the color was pretty thin there. It looks regular at first, but now because we're doing a fill and we're getting ready to file again, you'll end up filing all that color off. So sometimes you have to build the whole nail up a little bit. I don't want to say build it up, but add some. See how I have some here, right? I swipe the rest down, and it's kind of going to bring a little more color back into that toenail. So if you get what I'm saying, um, <clears throat> so that's basically what we're doing. We're not thickening up the toenails at all. We're just adding what needs to be added so that way, she, you know, she's reset. And then any excess, I kind of just swipe down and brush off. Okay, that's, that's basically what you want to do. So it's pretty much the same as doing a fill on a regular full set on the hands except for just way less product because we're not building an apex you don't have to worry about that we're not really resetting an apex we're just handling the regrowth or the growth I should say so if you're a person wondering wow how do I get acrylic toes to last five or more weeks and when should clients come in for fills okay for first-time clients I always tell them before they leave because people are always so scared that acrylic toes don't last and I tell them I say look babe you are going to get at least four weeks out of this set I don't know your um, your growth pattern yet but most people will come once a month to maintain their toes some people who have slower growing toes will come once every other month I always tell them I also suggest that after you get a fill no you get a set and then get one or two fills go ahead and, and book a removal and a new set because you do want to you don't have to take breaks in between sets that's actually a myth okay even with nails as long as your service provider your nail technician is properly applying and removing your enhancements you don't have to go out of your way to oh I need a two week of break usually what's going on there and people say oh I just need to take a break it's either 
maybe they don't have the money to get their nails done, which is completely fine. Or it's because their nails are damaged and jacked up because either their nail tech is using improper removal or application processes, or then they selves are removing the, the acrylic um, wrong, okay? So just keep that in mind. Um, the next thing is, as far as retention, right, it is going to be about how you prep and how you put the acrylic in the cuticles and seal them, just like a regular full set. So if you're wondering how to get this type of retention, please go watch one of my other um, acrylic toenail videos because it is start to finish on what you need to do. Okay, so hopefully that helps somebody. Now on this one, you're gonna see everything looks nice, everything looks cool, but then, uh-oh, what's going on with the big toe? All of this lifting, now this is what I'm gonna say, right? When you see that a toenail is lifted to this extent, do not just rip it off, do not just remove it, because there can be times where yes, most of it may be lifted, but some is still there. I personally would rather have some still be attached, e look, even on nails, even if it is like the littlest, tiniest part, right? I would prefer to just fill in the gaps even still. So for this, I went ahead and I put my um, e-file on a higher speed, this is a Koopa um, e-file. I've been using this for like since August. This is my second hand piece and I do think it's kind of a little bit like mm, a little messed up, but also not really. Um, I do recommend these. I stopped using little Amazon drills because you guys, it just wasn't doing it. It was hurting me. I feel like over time it hurts the client. So I had to go ahead at this point in my career and invest in a really, really, I don't wanna say really, really high end, but like a, a nicer end brand, okay? For those wondering so I basically turned it up to remove this lifting now you cannot do a fill on a nail period if there's this type of lifting because what happens is if you're not paying attention and you don't understand what type of lifting there is because even if it look if you press on it and it kind of lifts even a little tiny bit you got to get rid of it because sometimes it hides bigger lifting all right it doesn't happen often but it can happen from clients maybe they bumped into something and didn't realize it and they kept bumping that nail or if they're in the water a lot and different different things right you cannot fill a nail if there is lifting because what it will do is yes it's gonna look nice from the top angle but underneath that's a big old pocket that is able to number one get bigger and moisture can get under there and that's how you get greenies so greenies is basically you know when people take off their nails and swear they have fungus and mold that's no that's not what it is it's a green tint and it can be in different parts of the nail and that is just a sign of bacteria and moisture that was kind of festering under the nail uh, pretty much as soon as the um, natural nail hits the surface I mean the bacteria pretty much dies if that makes sense so there's no like treatment or anything that you need to do but people also um, they what is that called they commonly misconstrue what that is okay so I'm telling you if you do not remove all of this lifting that's what's gonna happen okay so I'm pretty much continually slightly pressing on it it's not causing her any pain or anything like that but the reason why I am keep pressing on it is because I need to see how much more lifting there is and what's going on so once I was pretty much satisfied with like pretty much most of the heavy lifting gone I went ahead and started prepping the natural nail on back to my you know I use the pretty much the lowest speed on the drill or a lower speed okay and then I'm gonna go ahead and prep the natural nail. Now I did see some redness in that area, so I am being careful because I wasn't sure if it was tender and it ended up not to be, but that's how I can tell that she must have banged it against something because this point where I'm at, I am getting rid of the rest of the lifting because there is some, you know, some flaking. And that's when I realized there is a slight crack in her toenail, it's very small. And normally when that happens, I always let the client know like, oh, hey babe, you must have banged yourself or you must have knocked yourself. Um, against something because you got a little crack normally at, at this point in time I assess is this something that I'm comfortable um, working over or is this a major situation that I need to further go into detail and educate them about etc etc so when it is a very very small crack to the point of like okay where it is in this area is gonna grow out pretty quickly it's not very bad and it's gonna be okay and as long as I tell them to stay up on their maintenance so I did end up letting her know hey this is a result of going so far without any maintenance um, like I said 
you need to come in at least once a month because this is a month growth and she did ask how will i know when it's time to come in what does how do i know my toenails are growing so i just told her you see how the color is no longer at your cuticle and it's further up i said your toenails have grown so um we basically just discussed and she said yeah it did take me longer to come back just because i was busy i said you know no worries that's fine but just be aware of the risk i always tell clients this when they wait a long time um because everybody oh shit everybody um their retention is going to be different or i should say their schedule is going to be different okay there's some people who can wait four weeks for a fill some people their nails grow so fast at three to four weeks they need to already have removed the nails or it will cause injury so i'm showing her right there like hey do you see this you know this is just a tiny crack it's fine it's going to be okay because when i fill it in it's going to provide enough strength that it's not going to make a difference you know what i'm saying so i went ahead and kept prepping and you guys these are the conversations that really need to be had again never am i bashing anybody that you know is looking to get in this field but there's so many uneducated people and not even trying to be educated that it does cause problems and issues there's a lot of ignorance within our clientele and if you're not properly educating them then they are going to continue on and think that some of these practices are okay they're going to think it's okay to wear their nails till the wheels fall off which it is not okay a lot of nail techs nowadays don't do fills and i'm honestly kind of tired of hearing clients um say like oh these you know these nail techs nowadays these stylists nowadays i'll be honest with you guys it's only like this because people are going to whoever it's only seemed like oh these new nail techs oh these new stylists it's because there nobody is getting educated the education is looked down on the education is looked at like oh you had to go to school oh well i learned all by myself Th no it should not be that you should be comfortable going to a, a licensed stylist or nail tech because they should have the knowledge at least they are taught the knowledge now what they do with that is on them because there's a lot of licensed people who are also equally as ignorant and equally as uh detrimental but we gotta stop giving these quote unquote new techs and new stylists so much benefit of the doubt because time and time again they are ruining your nail health they are not giving you any rhyme or re reason on why something is like a certain way they are not doing removals they're not doing fills they're, it's i'm sorry to tell you but please stop going to nail techs that do not offer removals that do not offer fills because to be honest if you're going to provide the service you should be able to take it off and you should be able to you know fill it you know then to each their own once again i'm never i'm never bashing but i'm just saying it will save you a whole lot of time and pain and heartache <laughs> okay if you will just please find the right stylist for you this is why i continue to educate people because at the end of the day it is very exhausting when people are telling you these stories on how you know they're getting serviced at dirty places and almost just like it's nothing like still in this day and age but people are complaining about that so it's like if you have a complaint about where you're going find someone new because i promise you the tech you want and need is out there she may not be the most popular but she might just be the most educated okay just hey that's just all i'm gonna say so in doing this toe you can see i am still feeling it just all it needs to be filled but now we have a point at which you have oh, i'm sorry you guys there's a point at which um the middle may end up a little tiny bit thicker just because i have to blend the old product with the new product and because so much of the old product is gone in such a odd place i have to like match that thickness so that's what i'm doing and when i file it down later on it's gonna like remove that bulge in the middle so i'm not even gonna worry about that right now um but yeah as you can see this was way less work than just removing the toenail completely now the other toenail that was lifted that popped off by itself when i was looking at it but sometimes it will not and sometimes it's going to feel as if it's stuck on there do not rip and pull honestly use your e-file and remove the lifting okay because sometimes it will still be barely attached and that's fine i would just leave it that way and fill it because at the end of the day we're going to shorten these and reset them back to the original length so that everything's going to be reset and all that's not even going to matter all right what i will say is if you are doing acrylic toes on people right 
They should not be having to come back every two weeks. That is way too soon. There, there should not be enough growth for them to come back every two weeks because, I, okay, just to give you some facts, right? If you lose a full toenail, right? Like your toenail, your big toe comes off, you have nothing there. It's gonna take a year to grow back. That's how slow that toenails grow. So you can think on an average every month, right? You have like probably like less than half an inch of growth in a way. So whereas four weeks on the hands, it will look like, okay, probably a quarter of the nail is showing. It's not gonna be the same for toenails, right? And even on, on um, full sect on the hands, two weeks, honestly, that is too soon to be coming in for a full on fill. Maybe a touch up or a reshape, you know, sure. But uh, when we're talking about retention and we're talking about the things that cause these enhancements to actually last, that's going to be, see how I'm like tucking the cuticles, I'm making sure everything is close to that epinicium and making sure that it's going above and beyond than just like getting right in front of the cuticle area, all right? So if your clients are having to come back every two weeks for their touch for their fills, I mean, then that means you need to work on getting closer to the cuticle area, okay? Because literally once a month, that's good enough. Either at three or four weeks, they need to either be getting a fill or full set, okay? I know some people encourage like, oh yeah, my nails last for six weeks. That is incredibly dangerous. On the hands now for the toenails somebody six weeks might be see might be her four weeks and that's fine so really what you're doing is letting your client know hey you got to come back in four weeks regardless and once we see your growth I will move forward and tell you hey you can stretch this out a little bit longer or if this is the perfect timing for you okay because it's very rare that anybody will need to come back at four weeks I mean two weeks okay so <clears throat> as we continue with this process we are gonna go ahead and file which normally I've just tested to see if it's dry and it is I already knew what it was but so normally I would um, do one foot like completely and then do the other foot but just based based on the fact that I had to put on a new toenail there and then a new to like I just didn't want to risk accidentally filing and it's wet because honestly that is so annoying so what we're doing here is I am filing the tip down so that way um, we are squaring her out which she was already squared out but you know keep it with that shape and just shortening the toenail because like I've told you guys time and time again most people do not actually want long toenails. That is a myth. A lot of people are scared to get acrylic toes because they just think like, okay, you're gonna put a tip on, it's gonna be long as possible. No, this enhancement should look extremely natural. Now, I will say, I think some people do them too short to where like the, the top of the toe meat is really peeking over. I feel like they look best at the tip of the toe unless somebody like specifically requests it to be um, extremely short just it's only just because like the look of it to me personally um, some people can go for a longer length and that's just based on their anatomy of the toenail as well as the length of their natural toenails so if somebody comes in with their toenails kind of on the longer side I'm just gonna put the like I'm not gonna cut your toenails I'm just gonna put the acrylic on in shape as I see fit and file it down if that makes sense so um, I'm pretty much the one who determines the length of the toenails if that makes sense i i guess i just have a knack of knowing what looks good on people and as you talk to the person and, and you learn their lifestyle you learn their hobbies you know you ask about their habits and things like that those are also questions that are supposed to be asked which is why i say you should keep looking for a licensed nail tech if you don't already have one because it's not a game okay there are consequences to having extensions if they are not properly done okay so you guys can see this toenail is a little bit smaller than the rest but you know it's okay it's it's fine in the end it's not gonna really look any different but you guys can also see that I am just really taking my time to focus now a fill is pretty short not gonna lie 
um, especially when all 10 toenails are pretty much intact, which is usually the case. Most people, when they come back for fills, their toenails are still intact, um, whatever the case may be. But there are sometimes people who deal with different issues and that make everybody's um, retention a little different. But at the minimum, it should be four weeks. You know, some people may chip a toenail or some people may lose one. But, yeah. So, you guys can see me. I am now sealing the cuticles. And you can see, well, I'm going underneath because, it, you know, the acrylic is a little thick. But be careful with how you do this because you, the natural toenail is underneath. And it's it's pretty much going to um, cause, like, a C-curve. But the way I do it is not horribly terrible I'm just pretty much uh, what do they call it like contouring the underneath and then going on top to adjust the thickness as well and you can see as I'm filing there's no acrylic flaking off so it's completely dry and then on top of that look how close the acrylic is to the epinigium okay or what you guys refer to as like the cuticle area right look how close it is so you can already tell that in a week or two, it's not going to really be too much growth because the cuticle area is tucked in so well with that acrylic that it really looks like they're growing like that. <sighs> Ooh, I didn't realize I'm still so tired. And so that's what you're looking for when you're looking for, um, are these toenails going to last? So you need them to be so close that it looks like they're growing out, but not close enough that the acrylic is on the actual skin. Because that's what is going to cause them to pop off. Because you're not going to be able to properly seal them. Alright. So at this point. I'm just making sure everything is nice and even. And just aesthetically pleasing. Um, you know. I can't tell you how much filing is enough filing. You just have to know. That's just a personal thing for everybody. I... There's a certain look that I kind of look for and to when I know like, okay, I'm done. So then I always go on the opposite side. I like to look and see what's going on with everything. Make sure everything's nice and even. You got to look from all angles. Like, I know I say that a lot, but you just have to. Okay. So I decided that based on the shape of the other ones, I mean the length, I wanted to shorten these two a little bit because the big toe, okay. It's already longer than the rest for the most part. You're gonna have to adjust the size of the toenail to fit the overall, you know, vibe of the foot. You see what I'm saying? Like, it might look really good that that toenail is like, ooh, this is really good. But when you look at it collectively, it's like, is that a little too long? All right, you gotta maintain the overall, not just the look, but if some toenails are longer than the others, it's gonna just cause accidents, okay? That's like, you're just asking for somebody to chip a toenail or something, all right? So as you can see, even from this angle, they look pretty even. They look like they just match and that they just go. So normally I would top coat and all that stuff and do the massage, but because I'm filming and I was kind of in a flow, I'm like, you know what? Let's just go ahead and shape to the next one. Because as you guys know, I don't cut anything out when I do acrylic toes. Well, actually, I don't really cut too much out when I do nails either but like when it comes to acrylic toes I don't cut too much out because I want you guys to see the full process I want you guys to see just about how long it takes as you guys can see I did this client in less than an hour for the fill and that was including um, redoing one nail and taking a lot of time to fill the other so yeah that's pretty much what it is okay um, I personally do not mind doing fills. I feel like it's actually very helpful because if clients are not getting fills, that means they may not be keeping up the best way with their enhancements. And as a lot of nail techs continue to, you know, update their policies and different things like that, you see a lot of people have been putting like, they don't work on damaged nails, but it's like, you don't work on damaged nails. But the only way for some of these clients to get these nails off is to pop them off and that causes damage. So I don't know exactly but when they say damage, like where on the scale do they mean that? But I just, look, we all grew up going to full service salons. So I try my best to incorporate all those services and then some. I personally 
just feel like I want my clients to keep coming back to me and only me. So I'm going to provide all these type of services that know it's going to bring them back into the door. Okay. So if nothing else, you could do it just, just because you want your clients to become regulars. And I'll be honest, in my city, it's not too many people that do acrylic toes, especially not as well as I do them. Uh, a lot of people tell me they search, they find me very easily on Instagram. So I feel like if I didn't do fills, they would be trying to go to traditional shops and honestly their result wouldn't last. And I feel like people, people would probably only get acrylic toes for like special occasions and stuff like that. Um, which that's, I want people to be getting acrylic toes, you know, year round all the time, every time, which is what they do. Okay. So, oh, okay. So yeah, that's, this is what we're doing. You want to kind of be careful when you're doing fills because sometimes things may not be all the way, um, what is that called? may not be all the way dry so you will know because it will be like a little bounce back in the acrylic you'll try and go to file and it will just seem like mm, this ain't all the way sturdy you know what i'm saying and if you're not careful you can actually file off a whole chunk i've done that more times than you can imagine just going and just like oh i'm just gonna go 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 and it's like oh how is this not dry like you can work so fast that it's like dang now i gotta wait like i did all that hella fast now i gotta wait for it to be dry so, you know, just keep that in mind, especially when you're filing the cuticle area, you do not want to have to go back in and put, you know, a little smidge of acrylic because you didn't accidentally filed what, it, and it's not even like that it's wet, wet. It's just the fact that it's not fully dry. So it seems sturdy, but as soon as you put the file to it, it will file off in a chunk. I'm telling you that right now. So be careful. Okay. So there's where you see that there was like a little hump from the old product meeting the new product. Now I am being careful and this toenail may be slightly a little bit um, thicker period just because of how her toenails sit and, ha and um, how the acrylic is placed, you know what I'm saying? And that's the thing that happens. Sometimes toenails are a little bit differently on each foot, but I have to also be careful of the fact that there was that area on her toenail that had a crack and was a little bit um, pinkish. I know it's hard to see in the video. It wasn't horrible or anything. It was just like, I had to take a second look to just, you know, look and see or whatever um so there's actually nothing really wrong but because this is milky white milky white <laughs> milky white acrylic you will be able to see through it so that's kind of why i stopped filing in a way because i'm like oh i do not want to be able to see any if there's any like bruising or anything you're not going to want to see that through so just a tip if you have a client that may have like a bruised toenail or you know something going on with their toenail that you are able to work over because it is safe but they want white toenails i always recommend nude like hey how about try french tip or try straight up nude because you're going to be able to see that bruise or you're going to be able to see that you know redness or discoloration so that's just a tip for you guys um nude doesn't cover everything like sometimes people have like spots of black like if they've had injury or some people's colors are just some people's colors some people's toes <sighs> are just extremely discolored and black just either from old injury or just naturally and so nude will cover it but you'll still be able to see a, a faintness of the color okay so yeah I'm just making sure I don't do too much but do enough to get that area flat and then I am going ahead and uh, filing the tip. So I'm looking from this way to make sure that everything is together and making sure that, you know, the C curve is not so strong that from the front or from the client view, it looks like literally just a, a dang horseshoe at the tip. That's really not the most flattering look on toenails to me personally, but you know, to each their own. But I really hope that this process kind of showed you guys that yes you can do a fill on acrylic toes a lot of people kind of get scared to or they just assume like no you have to take it off every time which is not true and yes it's it's it can be pretty quick but you'll need to know that this is all dependent on your personal retention okay so if your retention is not very good then you probably don't see people come back enough for you to do fills so you're gonna have to also keep that in mind and you know be open with your customers and your clients and let them know like 
hey if there's something going wrong let me know because sometimes people have this you know notion that acrylic toes don't last and so if your retention is kind of on the lower side like maybe two weeks they might think that's normal because it's like oh well the shops look the shops either don't last long enough or they last way too long and are gonna rip your toe off you know so there's no in between so they don't have any real concept or any real like education on what acrylic toes should look like after a month or you know after two weeks or after a certain amount of time all right so really like i said when it comes to the retention it's going to be the prep it's going to be the tucking the cuticles and how you file them when you're doing your finished filing all right so at this point in time we're ready to top coat like i said normally i would do it like this okay i would file then i would top coat then the massage but due to um the fact that i was already kind of in a flow i just decided like you know what we're just gonna do it like this we're just gonna do all the application all the filing all the everything and she was very happy um you know she i i mean i know she'll be back because where, she, where else is she gonna get them from you know what i'm saying but yeah and this top coat we're gonna cure for one minute and then i just decided to include a little tidbit on the massage you know because like i said massage comes after every time uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really hope that it helps some of you guys, even with your own toenails, let alone a client. I know a lot of people, they like to work on them own, their own selves. So I hope you guys just enjoyed this video and got a lot out of it. You guys don't forget to subscribe, okay? Because it's about to be Halloween season. We've got some looks coming, I'm sure. And as usual, I will see you guys in the next video.